Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video, we're going to look at adding and subtracting mixed numbers. And first, let me show you with these uh, visual exercises as to what all is going to be going on. Because there are many things going on. Let's say we have to add 2 and 2 thirds and 1 and a half. Now, first of all, we cannot add thirds and a half together, just like that, because they are not the same size parts. We need to divide this into sixths. So it becomes four sixths over here, and this one into sixths too. So it becomes three sixths. Okay, now we can add the fractional parts, and uh, we would get let me add here the whole pies, three whole pies, and then we have four and three sixths, which is seven sixths. And now, from the seven sixths, we get one more whole pie. So we actually have four whole pies and then just one sixth left over. Okay, now let's say we have a subtraction problem. There's two and one fourth, and then take away seven eighths. And I want to take away from here 7 eighths by crossing out pieces, but there are not any eighths to start with. I have to make the eighths by splitting this into two, so now I have two eighths. And then I need to divide this into eighths too, so I can take away some. Okay, now it's ready. I can cross out 7 eighths, like the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm left with one whole pie and three eighths. So, when you are teaching these things, it's good to show students what all has to take place with these visual exercises. But then when we get into just numbers only, there's so many things going on that I like to help students, first of all, with this format of the write-up. We have our problem here, but we're gonna write it again here so that we have the common denominator for the two fractions because that's where you have to start. You cannot add these together or here you cannot subtract because the denominators are different. It's like having different size parts, different size pieces like we started with there. And then after that we can add or subtract. In subtraction we may have to borrow. Then in addition, once we have added, we may have to do what I did here. This improper fraction may need to be changed so that there's a proper fraction here and then the count of holes increases by one. And then lastly, you may still need to simplify your answer. These didn't need to sim be simplified, but that is often the case. Many things going on. Let's look at this one. First of all, eight and six, they're not the same denominators, so I need to find, write it here again, but with a common denominator. But what is the common denominator? Okay, students should already know how to add unlike fractions by this point. So thinking of eight and six, we can first of all multiply eight times six is 48. 48 is one possible denominator to use, but 24 is smaller and works as well. I'll use 24. Then think equivalent fractions. Eight, three eighths, and then how many 24 fourth parts is it going to be? Now eight goes to 24 three times, so we go three times three, nine. And here, six goes to 24 four times, and so we go one times four here, like that. And now we're ready to add. Here I can add six plus two is eight, and here nine plus four is 13 over 24. We don't need to do anything else to this answer, because it does not simplify, and also the fraction here is a proper fraction. It's less than one, so we are not going to get one more whole pie or anything. That's done. In the subtraction, the same thing. Let's rewrite it here, using a common denominator, which this time we will use 9 times 2 is 18. And 9 times 2 is 18, so 2 times 2, 4. And here, 2 times 9, 1 times 9, 9. And now, okay, ready to subtract. Well, almost. Because 
from four eighteenths, you cannot take away nine eighteenths. We have to borrow. We're going to borrow one more, one pi, one whole pi, leaves eight whole pi's here, and then this pi needs to be divided into eighteen parts. So we get eighteen eighteenths we are borrowing. And here's already four eighteenths, so eighteen and four makes twenty-two eighteenths. And now we can subtract. 22 minus 9 is 13 eighteenths here, and then 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay, and that's now done, all done too, because this does not simplify. And let me look at one more problem here. Again, the denominators are different, so we need to rewrite the whole problem. 3, and okay, 9 and 5. I multiply 9 times 5 is 45, and that is my least common denominator. I'll use that. Okay, 9 times 5 is 45, so this times 5 as well. 40. And 5 times 9, and then 4 times 9, 36. Now add. Okay, 3 and 3 makes 6. And then we have 40 and 36, which means makes 76 over 45. 76 over 45. And here we have a fraction that is an improper fraction. It is more than 1. So we need to change our final answer yet. From this we will get one more whole pi, so the count of pi's increases to 7. And then we are left with 31 over 45. Again, my answer doesn't simplify further. But you could have one more step here, if this was to be simplified. Okay, so it makes into a kind of a complex calculation with many different steps. So students need lots of practice until they can be totally confident in all these steps. Lastly, let us look at an application, a word problem. We have a picture frame that is 6 and 1 8 inches wide and 8 and a half inches tall. So this here is the Total width is six and a one eighth inches. And total height eight and a half. And then the frame itself is made of wood that is three eighth inches wide. And the question is asking how wide and tall is the actual area for the where the picture goes? This frame here, this here is three eighths. Or this way is two. Now, to find the width, this here, the width of the white area, we have to take the total width and subtract the 3 eighths and the 3 eighths, right? Subtract these. So we need to subtract 6 eighths. So I'll take this 6 1 eighths and subtract 6 eighths. There. And... Uh, Again, no, well, this is an easy situation because I have eighths and eighths. I don't have to change them into other fractions with the same denominator. But I do need to borrow, because there's one eighth and minus six eighths. So I take one whole pi, leave it five whole pi, and my pi is going to be divided into eighths. Eight eighths. There's one eighth already. Total nine eighths. Now subtract nine eighths minus six eighths is three eighths, and then five minus nothing. Five. There, that's the answer for the width. In the height, we do the same. We take the total height of eight and a half inches and subtract the three eighths and three eighths, or a total of six eighths. So I'll write it here. Eight and a half minus six eighths. This time I have different denominators, so I need to rewrite my whole problem. Over here. 8 and okay, half is 4 eighths. Take away 6 eighths. Now, I could borrow again like I've done in, the, in this one here. But this is a fairly simple subtraction. 4 eighths take away 6 eighths. So I'll just use mental math. I know I'm going to have less than 8 pies left. Just 7 pies after I subtract. And then uh, all those 4 eighths will be gone. Then I take two eighths more from the one whole pi, which leaves six eighths. 
which simplifies to seven and three fourths inches. There, and this answer was inches too.